Next up, we have D. Alam here for our comedy show. D. Alam is a transgender comedian, the first LGBTQ person to come out of Watford since Elton John, a two-time North Down New Act competition winner back in 2021, Lancaster Square Theatre New Comedian Runner-Up 2021, BBC New Comedy Award finalist 2022. With that, let's welcome her on stage. Hello, hi. Hello, uh, my name is Dee. Uh, I am transgender, full time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I actually, I came out as transgender three days after getting my Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> I think they need to update their list of possible side effects. <laughs> Good. Uh, it's good to be here. I had my first birthday since coming out as trans recently. Thank you. Usually a standing O, but it's fine. Um, and I do love a birthday, I do, but it is only my second favourite day of the year, uh, right after Halloween. Because uh, Halloween is the one time of year that it's okay to ask me, so what are you supposed to be? Uh, this year for Halloween, I went as Wolverine. I went as Wolverine, because <laughs> I'm an X-Man. <laughs> it's never been that slow before. <laughs> you got to keep up, guys. <laughs> uh, you know, it is good to be here. Good to be here at this, uh, this, uh, this conference. Uh, I appreciate you two sitting in the front row, <laughs> but also in the corner. You weren't going to overcommit. Just, just, oh, we'll come to the front, but we'll go fully to the side. Uh, it's fine, isn't it? It's I'd love to have you here. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, my, name is, uh, my name is Dee, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, and actually, I got to choose my own name, which is kind of weird. Not a lot of people get the chance to do that. Just me and Puff Daddy, actually, the only two people. Um, and uh, I feel like as a comedian, I kind of let myself down a little bit, calling myself something just kind of normal, like Dee. And I don't just mean like, some like funny first name. Like I could have called myself a whole phrase and everyone would have had to have been like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like I could have called myself game, set and match and immediately become the world's best tennis player. Just, just think about it. <laughs> I could have called myself, I quit, then walked into a Starbucks, ordered and left. All these sorts of things. Uh, but I call myself D, uh, and the reason is because my, uh, my old name uh, started with the letter D. So then when I came out, first of all, I just went by that initial, like some kind of French poet. Uh, but uh, obviously, there's also just like a regular woman's name. So over time, it just kind of stuck. And that's all well and good. But I was having lunch with my friend the other day, uh, and she was talking about her love life. And she was saying, uh, let me just put it this way. I think tomorrow... I'm going to be getting some D. And I was like, oh, yeah, like my name. <laughs> I am a trans woman who has chosen to call herself cock. <laughs> Very much the antithesis of the vibe. Um, but here we are. Uh, I actually, I went to an all-boys school, or so they thought. <laughs> 450 years of this school only accepting boys. I am, to my knowledge, the first person to go to this school to come out as trans. So I am, to my school, what a fancy wooden horse was to the city of Troy. <laughs> we got him, ladies. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I felt like it was a bit weird having that many boys in one place. Like, they start to get a little bit, a little bit strange. Like, all the boys I went to school with, to them, everything was gay. Apart from things that were actually quite gay. <laughs> so a big pile of sweaty men in tiny shorts. That's just rugby. But studying geography beyond GCSE... pretty gay. 
Uh, it's been a big year for me uh, in lots of ways. My nipples are illegal now. That's just the end of the joke. Uh, <laughs> it's been a big year. I came out as transgender and also bisexual, uh, which makes me a little bit of a lesbian. Would have got good odds on that at my birth. Jesus. <laughs> Congratulations, it's a beautiful baby lesbian with a penis. How progressive. Uh, but for those of you keeping track, that is L, B, and also T. Only one more to go. <laughs> Honestly, I'm collecting these letters like they're fucking infinity stones. <laughs> Call me Tranos. <laughs> Don't call me Tranos. <laughs> just kind of kind of slur adjacent <laughs> best avoided uh, it's good to be here uh, I, I do like being on stage but my first experience on stage uh, was actually quite difficult uh, I was uh, 11 years old um, at, at this school and um, the school play that year was Oliver and I really wanted to be Oliver I really wanted to be the star of the show um, but there was something really holding me back and that is when I was 11 I was a fat little boy. Now, for those of you familiar with the story of Oliver Twist, you might be able to see how being a fat little boy <laughs> something of an obstacle, because nothing snaps you out of your suspension of disbelief like a portly child slave. <laughs> Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> I think you've had quite enough there, Oliver. <laughs> How do you even get that big on gruel? <laughs> Seems to defy the laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> Save some for the other children. <laughs> so I didn't get the role. Uh, I didn't get cast. <laughs> Shock. Uh, but the, what made it even worse is that instead of me, uh, they cast, as Oliver, my brother. I know. <laughs> Shocked silence. Uh, and it was really difficult, obviously, you know, seeing him do all the things that I'd really wanted to do. Uh, and what made it extra difficult was when my parents came uh, to see the show. And afterwards, you know, we were, we were with them all in, in, in the like, little, little green room. And they were saying to my brother, oh, my goodness, we were so proud of you. We love you so much. It was so amazing. We feel so lucky to be able to see you be so amazing. And you, well... <laughs> Didn't you just fill the stage? <laughs> I know. <laughs> just tragic, really, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, it's, 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 it's good to be here. Uh, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy doing comedy. Uh, but, it, you know, I feel like coming out as trans has obviously changed my life in, in so many ways. You know, like I had to come out in all different areas of my life. You know, like I had to come out at work. Um, which is kind of tough, because I felt like as soon as I came out, it kind of changed the way people looked at me, you know, and changed what they expected from me, almost. You know, once I told them that I was a comedian. Because, because like, work comedy is not the same as, like, this kind of comedy. Like, I was in a meeting the other day, and a guy just said, uh, yeah, guys, I think we're really going to have to move fast on this one, like a marathon runner. People lost their goddamn minds. And it's like, not only is that not a joke, fast like a marathon runner, that's the slowest kind of running there is. <laughs> Statements of fact do very well in an office comedy environment. Like, you can just be going and get some water with the lads from marketing. You know them. And you can say, oh, <laughs> Thursday. And they'll go, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> wow, I forget you're a comedian. So quick. Um, you can then combine two statements of fact into one. This is peak office comedy. I'll give you an example. Uh, I was having some lunch at my desk the other day. I was having some pizza. And a guy came up behind me and said, Oh, pizza lunch? <laughs> now, what I should have said is, <laughs> Never talk to me again. <laughs> But what I found myself saying was, oh, yeah. what am I like? <laughs> I've been on the BBC. 
and that was the best I could do. Uh, they'd also have to come out as trans in the workplace, of course, um, which meant I had to go through, all the, go through all these, like, internal office processes. Like, I had to come out, first of all, to the HR lady. Now, don't know if any of you are familiar uh, with the archetype of the HR lady, uh, but my HR lady, she was actually so sincere that she was really quite aggressive. She was just like, wow! Thank you for sharing that with me. Let's make an action plan. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> And she had, she had questions, and I'm used to like a certain set of questions, uh, but her questions were insane. So like, for instance, I mentioned my girlfriend. I mentioned that my girlfriend had been really supportive through this early part of my transition. And upon hearing this, something inside her brain just fucking switched. And she was like, oh, <laughs> A girlfriend? <laughs> what? 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 What's her deal? So I just said, I don't know, she loves me. <laughs> and she said, oh, how peculiar. <laughs> so thanks for that, Beverly. <laughs> mixed. We'll go with mixed for that one. <laughs> she then asked me something that I genuinely had never considered before. She said, um, so is your girlfriend going to, you know, is your girlfriend gonna, uh, you know, is your girlfriend gonna change her pronouns as well? <laughs> and the only thing that I think can possibly have been going through her mind was this. You're too kind. Uh, and if my girlfriend hadn't also come out as trans, that would have been very insensitive. Uh, no, she didn't. She didn't do that. She's a cis, cis lady. I should know my audience because you're like, oh, okay, cool, good for her. Uh, them, her, them, him. Uh, no, she didn't do that. She's a cisgender uh, lady. Uh, and we really did stay together. Uh, something that I think is just so beautiful. You know, like we, it was our three year anniversary last month, which was very exciting. Uh, thank you. Um, and I came out about 18 months ago, so it's been about half and half, kind of before and after. It's something that I think, you know, just to speak, you know, kind of honestly for a moment, I think something that so many trans people, when they come out, you know, they can't necessarily count on any support of any kind. So for me to have that from someone so important, it's something that I think is just so, so wonderful. You know, like she really did love the person underneath, and that's something that I know that I am, I'm so lucky to have, something that I am just so grateful for. Um, the thing is, I can never break up with her now. <laughs> like, I don't want to, but I can't. <laughs> you know? Like, the, the dynamics changed, you know? Like, she can get away with so much now. Like, she kind of wants to get a cat. I don't really want to get a cat. And she's just like, oh, I'm sorry. Is this not precisely what you signed up for at the beginning of our relationship? <laughs> if you can get a pussy, 
then so can I. Um, uh, I know it can be a lot, you know, I know this obviously is an LGBTQ plus conference and that's amazing. Uh, big hand for the organizers just quickly because it's such a wonderful event. Um, but, you know, even with that being the case, you know, I can, I can imagine it can be quite a lot of, you know, trans material. I imagine most of you here are not, are not trans. Um, so I thought, you know, just to kind of uh, give you some kind of more relatable comedy, uh, I thought I would uh, just do uh, some cisgender material for you all, um, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Um, okay, I hope you enjoy. So, like, uh, what's the deal with holidays? <laughs> Relatable, right? Uh, it's not live at the Apollo, it really is. Uh, so, like, uh, I went on holiday recently, uh, and I, uh, I, I wanted to wear a swimsuit, you know. Uh, so I had, to, uh, I had to take my penis inside my arse crack. You know, it's, it's relatable uh, content for you all. Uh, <laughs> and the difficulty with this, as you all will know, uh, is, of course, first that you have to shave uh, that whole area. And for the ball sacked among you, <laughs> shaving a ball sack... Quite the Sisyphean task, isn't it? Like you think you've got one area, then you rearrange the skin, suddenly there's more like a magician pulling handkerchiefs out of his mouth. Like trying to shave a fractal. Actually, very tragically, an area of the Amazon rainforest the size of one ball sack is tragically cut down every year. It's very sad. Uh, and if you slip, you die. Uh, but uh, I did, I'd done that, that element of it, and then I, I, I taped my, for lack of a better word, penis, to my, for lack of a better word, anus. And when you become a closed circuit like that, <laughs> it really is like God himself is telling you, to go fuck yourself. <laughs> but I did it. I did it. And, and I, 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 I put the swimsuit on. Everything was looking great. I went down to the pool of this three-star Lanzarote all-inclusive resort. <laughs> and I sat by the pool and everything was going great. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to get in the pool. It's going to be great. <laughs> Reader, it was not great. Uh, Spoiler alert, uh, I got in the pool and I could feel it get a little bit loose. Uh, so I was like, okay, this is going to require some attention. So I got back out uh, and I knew I'd had to go back to the hotel room because it had, it had definitely, it was not workable, um, to use an, uh, a business term for you all. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to have to go back. So I wrapped a T-shirt around myself and walked very sheepishly back to the hotel room. Uh, and as I was doing so, I took a look around this, again, three-star, all-inclusive Lanzarote resort, and I looked at the faces of the people that I was trying so hard to impress, and they were exclusively red, leathery British pensioners <laughs> who haven't thought about the way they look since 1973. <laughs> and I thought, why am I going through all this trouble to impress these people? You know, and I should be proud of who I am, I should be proud of my body, uh, and I shouldn't be, I should be hiding away in this kind of shame. So I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it, I'm going to take the t-shirt off. I took the t-shirt off, and then they all immediately beat me to death. So, that's holidays for you, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that is, regrettably, the end of the comedy, oh no. Uh, but listen, you guys uh, have been lovely, I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your conference. I have been D. Allen. Thank you very much. Yeah.